Hi, how are you? Okay, Doing awesome. Good? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so thanks for coming on. And do I call you Amaranth or is that? Kate is fine. Kate? Yes. Okay. Um, thanks for coming on, Kate. Um, yeah. It was nice to meet you a couple weeks ago on the Scuffed podcast. I watch your stream from time to time, uh, but it was really cool to hear your perspectives on kind of mental health. So thanks yeah. very much for sharing those. No, no problem. I think I'm going to have you on my screen too. So if you need to crop my window so that you're not shown twice, then we can do that if possible. Okay. Um, thanks for letting me know that you were doing that. So, yeah, no and, and it's Kate, you said? Yes. And what did you, so I saw that our, our topic today was going to be something about social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking just more of like the various effects that social media from the creator side can have on the, the mentality of the streamer or YouTuber, whatever it is. Yeah, I'd love to hear your perspectives on that. Yeah, well, something I've noticed for me personally, I think the biggest change with social media is like, I feel like I don't have as much personality as I did before I started streaming, you know, like day in and day out. It's like, cause I guess everything's so monotonous that I feel What's like that? I no what? longer partake in the activities that made me me. That's kind of frightening. A little bit. To, to say right? that you like, no, like have less personality or no longer have personality. Yeah. It's like really weird. It's like, I guess for smiling, it's a lot harder for me to do that. Like I used to, like, I just noticed to myself, like, I guess, less bubbly because i used to do like disney princess parties and stuff mm. for kids birthdays before i started streaming and that became like something that was like a part of my like normal identity too where i was just smiling all the time mm. you know it was like positive person and i guess like social media i've noticed that physically my mouth doesn't feel as comfortable smiling because i don't do it as much you know i'm hearing like emotion in your voice aggressive. yeah yeah i'm a very emotional person too that's what just how you... i've do you mind if I ask what you're feeling right now as you say that? Concern. Okay. What are you concerned about? How to like keep that balance, right? Because I think that's like the biggest problem I found is chasing long-term happiness as like goal-oriented for being a social media person, like what I want to achieve in life versus like short-term mental like happiness i guess like short-term indulgences versus like keeping the grind up to achieve long-term dreams if that makes sense yeah it does make sense you know usually i say this later but can i think for a second yeah go for it because i'm hearing a lot of important stuff from what you're saying kate um yeah and don't don't get like too concerned if i sound emotional part of my problem is i can't breathe very well so like i get over anxiety feelings much easier than normal people i guess so I have a breathing issue, so like I can't breathe deeply when talking about things. So I just like sound like I'm about to cry, but like emotionally I feel okay. Oh, okay, that's useful to know. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, hmm. I'm curious about your breathing issues, but I I think that's more on the medical <laughs> side. Yeah, yeah it's it's just something <laughs> I noticed that if I like stop and I breathe, and then that the the waver in the voice fades. But okay. like, if I keep going in a sentence without breathing, it's just, it just sounds really bad. It's yeah. Worse than it, it sounds worse than it actually is. How long have you been breathing like that? Um, I guess my whole life has been deviated, but it's gotten worse as I've gotten older. Because I think the cartilage is like growing against my favor, you know, just as my nose ages. Hmm. Interesting. So it's something I have to fix soon. But that's like another issue is like scheduling time to get things like that fixed when it would take like a hiatus from social media and losing that momentum and stuff. Okay. So it sounds like there's really a cost to taking care of yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm, you know, not to sound bleak, Kate, but I'm almost like hearing that you're kind of losing a part of yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, that's fucking frightening, you know? <laughs> and and so what are, and by the way, Disney princess parties sound awesome. I think my kids would absolutely love that. They wear, um, they have, we got them Elsa costumes for Halloween, like two years ago. Yeah, yeah. Frozen is one of my favorites. Maybe one year ago. I, it's It's rusty now. But, and they wear them like once a week. 
like my older kid will just be like, today's an Elsa costume day. And she'll just like oh, it, it, at 1230. Yeah. She'll just like it, you know, after lunch, she'll go upstairs to her room and she'll actually like change and then she'll fold her clothes and put them away, which is really awesome. I mean, because she doesn't leave a mess. She used to leave a mess, but she'll just like, today's an Elsa costume kind of day. And it's not really a costume. It's just like she just puts on her Elsa dress. Best Halloween costume money we've ever spent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they love that stuff. I used to do it like every weekend. So I saw all the dresses, all the kids belt the songs. It was like a really like really fun, wholesome time. Yeah. And yeah. and I, I guess w tell me about what that person was like, the person who did those kinds of things. Hmm. Can you tell me I about guess that kind of thing? It wasn't so much that like I was different in the way I always thought about things, but just like I felt like I was more happy. But I think some of that comes to do with like the whole um, spontaneous nature of that job, right? Every party was different. And I noticed that with streaming every day, even though you might be doing different things on stream, the routine is mostly the same. Okay. And I feel like that's hard for me because I do have ADD, you know? And so it feels like that's like almost like emotionally like life sucking, you know? But at the same time, I also have like a huge goal that I want to achieve. And I know that social media is like the best way to get there, like monetarily, you know? And it's also like, I feel really lucky to have social media because so many people want to have a platform mm -hmm. and they don't ever get it. So part of me feels like um, I need to be able to take advantage of the opportunity while I have it because who knows how long it's going to last, you know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm hearing like you kind of being stuck or pulled in a lot of different directions. On the mm -hmm. one hand, you have goals. On the other hand, you're grateful and lucky to have the opportunities that you have. And on at the same time, I'm sort of noticing that like taking advantage of those opportunities and being grateful for what you've been given also comes at like a significant personal cost. Yeah. That's really tough. I mean, how do you... Yeah, I, I mean, it sounds... Because I'm, I'm sort of hearing you give a piece of yourself like every single day when you do something that's a little bit more grindy and maybe you don't feel like it, but you recognize like this is an amazing opportunity. So you sort of like want to mm -hmm. do it and, and you do want to do it, but it just, it seems, it sounds like it's hard to do. Yeah. What makes it hard? I guess like for me, um... I don't take breaks. So that's probably what makes it hard. Because I think for the past four years, it's been like stream, 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 stream. Like, like not just like two hours a day, but like anywhere from, I guess, eight to 15 hours days of stream. Holy hell. And I don't take vacations or days off because I'm like, oh, no, the momentum. I would lose all the momentum in working towards. Because like in the streaming, what I've noticed is like to build something like sub number, for example, is the easiest to measure just by the numbers. It can take months to build a few thousand extra subs. But then if you disappear for a week, you can lose them like that. You know, so it's like a very like high cost type of job for if you take time off. Mm. Yeah, that's hard. So it's, it sounds like you have to every day off is like taking away something you've built. Right. Do you feel trapped, Kate? A little bit. Because I didn't like, I guess for me, it's like I started streaming about four years ago. So this has been most of my like young adult life. Right. And it's like, if you don't do stream, it's like you can't. I, there's really no other job that I can think about that would have like the same uh, freedom of getting to do what I want. And also the same level of financial support that it brings towards sure. like just living plus what I want to achieve later. And and can you, do you mind sharing what you want? You mentioned that once or twice. What do you want to achieve later? Um, I want to open a animal rescue ranch eventually, like no kill, no, no cage. So it would be like dog sanctuary plus some like more farm animals too, maybe. And that's going to be like a huge thing that I want like about a big scale. So it's really difficult for me to like justify time off because I feel like it's taking away from that opportunity, you know? Hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like a difficult balance. It's like long term, I know that doing it like I have is mentally draining. So I'm probably not performing at my top level. So like, even though I'm streaming every day, I'm probably not growing as much as I could be if I was actually like, 
um, mentally healthy. Because, you know, there's a vibe that people have when they're like, they got sure. it all together, just more charismatic to be around. But then if, uh, if I focus on my short term happiness and like get myself put together, then I have less momentum and more distractions to keep me from actually doing the job. It sounds like there are a lot of things more important than you. Probably. That's probably ever, a part of it. I mean, that's what I'm hearing, right? I'm hearing that like there are a lot of things like it's like Kate versus growing your stream, Kate versus the animal rescue ranch, Kate versus Amaranth. Mm -hmm. And and usually, like, Kate ends up at the bottom, which I think is how you end up four years without a break. Right? Because I'm kind of noticing that, it, you know, yeah. whenever you would take a break, there's just some voice in your head that says, but, like, actually, this is more important. So you can't do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does that do to you? See, I don't know. That's the scary part. <laughs> Like, I feel like I'm past, like, people always say, like, don't keep going, you're going to burn out. But I feel like I would have burned out by now, so I might be past that point. And I just don't even know anymore. How do you so feel? Like, that perspective? How do you feel on a day-to-day -day basis? I don't really know. I don't think about it. You know? It's like, I just do it. Sometimes we don't think about things because... We don't like what we would discover. That's the thing. I don't really know what I would discover. How do you hmm. feel about yourself? That's the scary part is I don't know anymore. What's scary about that? I feel like a robot a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how you treat yourself, right? Every day, wake up, grind. <laughs> and for a good reason. I think one of the hard, hardest things, Kate, is that some of the worst things that we do to ourselves are not out of like selfish reasons, but actually selfless reasons. When we sacrifice, we do it for bigger causes, right? causes with a capital C. Yeah. And it's hard because if you don't make that sacrifice, then, you know, you're one step away from the rescue ranch mm -hmm. and you're one step away from all of those animals that need love and protection and support. And it can almost feel like you're sacrificing, like it's like there's either you sacrifice yourself or you sacrifice them. Right. Is that how it feels? Yeah, I would say so. Like just the the long term, and don't don't feel bad, Chad, if I'm crying. I'm like I'm okay. I can still talk. It's just that my body. This is how I this is how I respond to any kind of stress, whether it's anger, sadness, anxiety, overwhelm, happiness. I just cry. It's just that's just me. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how it feels. I guess it's like, do I cater to myself, which feels shitty because to me, it's like the animals have such a shorter life. And, you know, there's the whole concept of, like, if an animal gets stuck in a shelter, it can, sometimes can live just a few days, and then they kill it because there's not enough space. So it feels really bad to, like, try and value my life over theirs, you know? So how does it feel if you value yourself over them? Selfish, I guess. And how long have you been trying to not be a selfish person? I guess most of my life. I've just always had like a very big respect for animals and wanting to help them since I was a kid. I think part of that comes from like not really having many like social guides in my family, you know, because my parents didn't really have friends coming over. I never had like a social example. I was never good at making human friends. I was always just friends with the dogs on my street. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, I guess like I would just go outside sometimes and like every day, like my neighbor's dogs would just come up and roll over for belly rubs. And it was just like a genuine connection where it felt like you could actually connect to them without needing to be good at talking. 
you know, and, and then from like a family where it's they, my parents are always working and I was like left at home most of the time. You get really lonely, right? And so animals became like the, the only thing I cared about. Just how yeah. it is. You said animals became the only thing that you cared about, but I wonder if it's animals really made you feel cared for. Yeah, that too. It was like a mutual. Yeah. What was it like? So it sounds like you grew up without siblings? Uh, it's a little complicated, I guess, because I had an older brother who's kind of, who's my half brother that I really connected with. But then when I was four, he moved in with his dad since I was from my mom's second marriage. So he left the house. And then I was stuck with my other brother who had like the middle child complex. If you've seen that before, where it's like they don't get the attention of the young one, but they also don't get treated with respect like the older ones so they just kind of like act out out of spite so he was kind of rude to me until he became an adult <laughs> like you know like big brother like pigs on like sure. oh you can't play with me yeah like sibling violence i guess not like actual damage just like without hitting each other yeah so just sibling rivalry maybe yeah that's better yeah and and what was i mean can you tell me a little bit more about um you know, what kind of situation you grew up in or what your house was like growing up? Um, I guess it was just pretty boring life, you know, because it's just that my parents were working, but we didn't have enough money to actually do anything. So we had enough money to survive, but we never traveled. We never, like, spent much time together. So it was just kind of like, we, there was nothing wrong with the family, you know? Like, sure. there was never, like, domestic violence. There was never, never abuse. Like, my parents argued a lot, but I feel like most couples with, financial problems do that anyways so nothing out of the ordinary it was just like a lot of alone time I guess because they were always working it sounds like you understand why there was a lot of alone time mm -hmm. and, yeah and you kind of you recognize that that was sort of a necessity because they had to work yeah do you remember how you felt bored a lot <laughs> <laughs> so like uh I didn't actually get my own dogs I guess till I was like 12 because my parents didn't want me to have that responsibility as a child because they weren't there enough to be able to help mm -hmm. uh, so I just like started playing video games a lot and like did art and stuff so I found though that like with my ADD like stuff like art there's only I can focus on that like there are a few things I can hyper focus on like like training dogs art horseback riding and I think like um graphic design hmm. if I've made like web web images I used to like do like role play on Neopets because I was a dork and very lonely so <laughs> so like certain things I could hyper focus on but then other things I was just like really bored super easily okay and and what was high school like for you more of the same to be honest I was kind of like I guess a social outcast because I didn't have any social guides in my life so I never kind of learned how to talk to people and how to like be emotionally savvy with other humans it was more of just like the loner waiting for people to talk to me and that never works when everyone's waiting for people to talk to them I found out as an adult yeah <laughs> so it's like no no that's not proactive enough to actually make friends and and so it sounds like, like you've learned a lot it sounds like you weren't really modeled uh, there wasn't good modeling in terms of how to, you know, engage with people. But at the same time, just the fact that you're talking about it like that suggests to me that you've like figured that out and you've grown in some way. Yeah, like, I think we talk about it on my own podcast a lot when I have other girl influencers come on is that we're all so afraid of reaching out to each other because we don't want to be seen as like a leech that like ends up just all of us are lonely and don't talk to people. And how did you learn to overcome that? Um, I guess just by being online, it's easier, right? Because it's like you send them a message and you're like, hey, come be on my podcast. It's so much different than walking up to somebody and being like, do you want to be friends? You know? It's like a lot less scary. And and or, or do you feel like socially more adept now interpersonally yeah. or not so much? I feel like I can manage better. Um at conventions especially like I feel like I can talk to people easier now 
But I, there is always like that fear, I guess, from social media. That's like you don't know what their intentions are if they're meeting you at the convention. Like I always have to have security and stuff. It's just like it has a problem. I have a problem trusting people now because I have so many like stalker types that do follow me. So it's like I can I can manage better socially, but there's still part of me that like can't truly connect in a genuine way. Sure. What What do you mean by th- their stalker types? Uh, I does have various stalkers, but you don't really know who they are in person, right? So like all you know is their persona. So you don't really know what they look like often. So you can't really like trust them at conventions when you meet people because you don't know who in real life was actually being really creepy to you online. Um. So I, I, I'm noticing a change in, in the tone of our conversation. It seems like a little bit easier. Does it feel that way? Yeah, it's just I'm trying to breathe more. Good for you. Breathing is important. Um, yeah, I, I had a couple of thoughts about understanding the relationship between your body and your mind. And, uh, you know, we can go down that road in a second, but just to kind of give you a, a quick heads up. So, you know, I ask you sometimes, Kate, some questions about how you feel about yourself and you're saying, I don't really know. And that in and of itself sounds kind of scary, right? Is that fair to say? Yeah. And then at the same time, I'm noticing that you also say that this is just how my body reacts. Like, Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, Yeah. perfect. So that's a great observation. So the question is like, how does that work? And in my experience, oftentimes people who don't know what's going on in their mind, feel it in their body. Hmm. And so if there is some kind of like, so I, I, I mean, I really see this oftentimes more with men, but like. They don't know the vocabulary or they feel colorblind to their feelings, but they can like sense it in their body in terms of like tension or, you know, they get like a lot of tightness around the shoulders. They can clench their fists, things like that. So Mm -hmm. we can talk a little bit down the road if you'd like to about maybe how your body is sending you signals about how you feel about things, even if you're not consciously aware of them. Right. Um, okay. also, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to go down the road of actually having a medical conversation, but one other thing that I've noticed is that, you know, there's good data that suggests that breathing issues and anxiety are actually like very tightly connected. Mm-hmm. Um, so for example, diseases like asthma are worsened depending on your mental state. And there's actually like physiological reasons for that. So depending on, um, you know, hormones like cortisol and like other things, they can actually make your breathing worse. Um, so high stress states for prolonged periods of time will negatively impact your respiratory system. Mm-hmm. Um, so there may be something kind of there, but so those are just like, that. that's, you know, one or two thoughts. I wanted to hear a little bit about kind of what your upbringing was, because sometimes when people are feeling a certain way in terms of what I'm basically hearing from you is that you're not really sure who you are anymore. You're mm-hmm. kind of like losing yourself in the grind yeah and uh, it seems like a lot of the reason that you grind that way is because of these like big goals like goals with a capital g and so i was and and part of the reason that you have those big i mean i think part of the reason that you sacrifice yourself is because you do place other things above you Mm mm-hmm And so the reason I was asking about your upbringing is because sometimes people are sort of taught that. So they're taught Mm -hmm. that they may be not as important as other things, or they're taught, oddly enough, like selfless sacrifice to the point of hurting yourself can be taught two ways. One is if you were very, very neglected. The second is if actually someone did that for you. Mm -hmm. And then you're kind of like, that was the behavior that was modeled. Right. Um, Does any of that sort of like ring a bell or resonate or gain traction with you? I know I sort of kind of talked about a lot of different stuff. I understand what you're saying, but I don't think that any of that was actually in my childhood because for the most part, you know, my parents worked like they still told me they loved me. You know, it's like they've gotten fresher with each other. But like as an adult, you understand why. As a kid, you're just like, oh, shut up. (laughs) It's like y'all are so annoying type of thing because like, you know, you can hear them doing in like your room or outside it's just about like stupid stuff like you didn't get cabbage this is lettuce it's like, <laughs> it's, 
really, really stupid things. So yeah. I don't think that my childhood really affected me in that way as far as my upbringing. Maybe just the isolation set me on a path for like social issues. Mm -hmm. But yeah. like nothing that really like it's not so much anything that they did specifically I guess more of what they didn't do as far as like show examples and like this is how people socialize with each other sure. are like, you know, mm. yeah, yeah it sounds like they were pretty busy so they may not yeah. have had time to do that yeah so thanks for sharing that I, I think um, I'm kind of with you there Kate it doesn't seem like this is something that started in your childhood not everything does mm -hmm. and so then let me ask you something you know when did you learn how did you learn to like put yourself last? When did you start doing that? I'm not sure when. I feel like part of it was probably um, when I was streaming, I think in 2017. And then while I was streaming, one of my dogs started having like bloat, which is, um, I didn't find out this out till later what it was. But that's when like the dog's stomach, if he eats too fast, or drinks too fast and then goes to do an activity. Sometimes the stomach can start filling with air and then it turns on itself and it starts expanding and it cuts off all of their like organs and they just like die within 30 minutes. And that's what happened. I didn't know what was happening at the time. It was super traumatic. Yeah. But I feel like after that is when I started putting myself last, probably. At some level, I know that I couldn't stop it, but I still feel responsible for him dying because I was streaming at the time. <laughs> I know like there was nothing I could do right it's one of those things that happens it could literally happen if like someone else was feeding your dogs you weren't home or if you just put your food outside and go put it, do something else like it, it could happen at any time it was just a really bad coincidence that it happened while I was streaming so yeah I, I can hear that your mind understands that but how do you feel about it shitty okay I can understand that you would feel that way what does that mean just like if I had been there with him while he was eating, maybe he wouldn't have ran and got his bloat started, you know? But I know that like, especially since I didn't even know what it was at the time, I would have no idea, right? It wasn't something that I was aware of and was just like neglecting the situation. It's something that's not even talked about by vets very much. They just say, oh, dogs of this breed can be prone to bloat, but they never actually explain what type it is or the symptoms or anything. Oh my God. Yeah, so it's like... It's like common in German shepherds and stuff. Hmm. Oh, was it? Like, was your dog a German shepherd? Or a German shepherd? I grew up with a few German shepherds. Um. Hmm. So it's uh, so uh, Kate. I'm hearing you kind of like you. I'm seeing emotionally. I'm seeing one thing, and the words that are coming out of your mouth seem to be something else. So like you're saying, it wasn't my fault. It's a coincidence that it could have happened at any time. And it sounds like you really understand that. And yet you still feel pretty shitty about it. I'm guessing yeah. that you feel guilty. Mm -hmm. and like so, a, there's like a disconnect. It's like, I know I shouldn't, but I still do. Yeah. So why shouldn't you feel guilty? Because there's nothing I could do at the time for him, right? Because it's like it happened at midnight and the only way to for them to even have a chance of living if it starts doing that is to get them to like an emergency clinic and there were like none around me at midnight and then the operation then can may not even work to save them. Sure. So it was like something that like really it was just an unfortunate thing that I couldn't do anything about. So I know that it's not my fault like that he had this, but I also just, it feels bad, right? Because it's like you wish you would spend more time with them. Yeah. And, and so I want you to pay attention to what you said there. I know it's not my fault, but it feels bad. And what I hear mm -hmm. you doing right now is reassuring yourself. Does that make sense? Like you're almost yeah. like a friend consoling yourself. You're, you're yeah, trying to tell me. For the longest time, I did feel like it was my fault. But like I've come to terms of like, no, there's like, it could literally happen at any time. You could be out of town and someone yeah. could come feed them and it could still happen. Yeah. Or you could be with them and you wouldn't, I mean, you can't know what's happening to their stomach. Right. You know? So it's, it sounds like you feel pretty beat up about that. And, and, you know, I asked you, when did you start putting yourself last? And then you came up with this story. So how has this affected you? I think it made me feel like um, afterwards, it's like, yeah, I gave him like 
he, he I guess I got him when he was like six months old. So I've had him until he was five and this happened. And I was like, he got to live five like really good years. Imagine all those dogs in the shelter because I didn't, didn't get him from a shelter who get to live there for like a week. And because no one claims them, they just kill them, you know? And so I guess like feeling guilty for that, even though like I know I shouldn't kind of like made me have find my life purpose. So in a way, like it's something I'm really passionate about. So I know that good has come from the incident as horrible as it sounds mm -hmm. but it just feels really bad though because he didn't get to live longer you know it really is a, a real tragedy and, and so I, guess, like, I i had to see him die right i like saw him having seizures it was like a really traumatic like nightmare type of traumatizing event for a long time and i like i still have nightmares occasionally of like a zombie version of him coming out of the ground and running around, which is really fucked up, but it's like, it affects me still after three years. But I also know that it's something that I can't do anything about. So what do we do when something affects us and we can't do anything about it? We cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So uh, Kate, I'm getting the sense that you, you're still carrying this burden. And even yeah. though you know it's not really logical, at the same time, so if we think about behavior, behavior is not just motivated by logic, mm -hmm. right? And and I'm kind of, I'm get, getting the sense that there's like that emotion is part of what keeps you from taking care of yourself and taking a break and things like that, because it's sort of like, like, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And what do you think about that? I don't really know. It's more of just like one of the things like I really want this goal. And so I just keep going. And then that's why I'm, I'm confused. I'm like, do I chase the long term dreams that I know would make me like fulfilled in my life? Ultimately, like what I really want to do, my passion, or do I like take care of myself in the moment and like indulge in little like moments of joy to keep myself mentally sane at the risk of like my momentum of the career? Because it is a very momentum based thing that I found with social media. So it's like if you take a little time off, then your like monetization directly is impacted, you know? Yeah. Can I think for a second? Yeah, go for it. It may be a long second. It's okay. My seconds thinking about it have been very long too. <laughs> Are you less deserving than other people or animals? Hmm. I don't know if it's so much that I consider myself less deserving. It's just that it's hard for me to want other things, like, as much. What do you, you mean know? by other things? Like, taking free time off feels less rewarding to me than having my animal ranch fulfilled. Because it's like the things I could do in the meantime, like take a day off, go for, I don't know, whatever mental health things people do to relax. What do they really go to the spa? Do they travel? I don't even know. I haven't done any of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I just like free time, having free time, quote unquote, doesn't feel as rewarding to me. Okay. Sorry, that I'm going to alone though right all i have is like me and my dogs which is great but dogs can't go everywhere right and so i don't really have like a bunch of friends local that i could like even think of activities to do with okay so like i'm alone feels less rewarding i guess i'm wondering if actually like not only were social skills not modeled but relaxation and recreation weren't modeled what do you think Probably. I mean, I don't think my parents ever did that either. Like, we never took vacations or anything. It was mostly because we didn't have the money to. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's probably created my lack of desire for a vacation because I've never seen how, like, fun it is. 
you know, I've never been exposed to the thrills of relaxing. Okay, I'm going to need a minute. Because this is, I have things are coming together for me, but I'm also, there are a lot of different directions. Can I just yeah. think? That's fine. Okay, so let's just think about this. trying to sketch out a plan <laughs> to transform your life. Oh. But really to transform your life. Okay. Sorry for the silence. I know it doesn't make for very entertaining. <laughs> Twitch chat, I just glanced over. I made the mistake of glancing at Twitch chat and they said, get cats. <laughs> I already have dogs. I'm good. What kind of dogs do you have? I have a Border Collie and a Caucasian Shepherd. What's a Caucasian Shepherd? Uh, they aren't very popular here. They're like um, Russian mountain dogs used for like guardian protection. They guard Russian prisons. Big. In, in ballpark, I, I learned this, I made this mistake on the first or second time I ever did a stream where I asked a young woman where she's from. And I realized I'm not supposed to do that. But I'm just curious, generally, what part of the country do you live in? I'm in Texas. I'm in Texas too. Oh. Nice. Grew up in Texas. Same. I think I lived in the same house until I moved out. Hmm. Okay. So I think some of this stuff is like spiritual. Some of it is like a little bit more psychological and some of it is a little bit more physiological. And I realize we haven't been talking very long, so... Generally speaking, I try to tie things together for people at the end, but I think you've, you've done such an awesome job of like sharing so much, like so much rich information that I'd like to lay out a couple things. And then I'm curious about how we can help you or maybe explore whatever sticks because some of it may not stick. Any of it may not stick. Does that sound okay? Yeah. So the first thing is like, I get the sense, Kate, that it's you or them. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you make a lot of decisions every day where it's like, I have to do this or like I get to choose one or the other. And the crazy thing yeah. is that like that fundamentally needs to change. It needs to be you and them. And I think you already actually suspect this in some ways where you kind of say, if I don't take care of myself, I can't quite pop on stream sometimes the way that I should or I need to. And that like the quality of your streams could actually go up taking care of yourself. Yeah. And as someone who works like in stress management is my day job, that is what I see overwhelmingly. People mm -hmm. tend to have this idea that, you know, I don't have time for wellness. So I'll leave you with a, a really fascinating, I think, quote from the Dalai Lama. And the Dalai Lama said, people should meditate for half an hour a day. If they don't have the time, they should meditate for how long? What do you think? Uh, 10 minutes. Beautiful. No, he said, if you don't have the time, you should meditate for an hour. <laughs> right? We need it more. Yeah. And I know it sounds absolutely crazy, but like, that's actually how it works. People who don't have time to meditate for half an hour, when they meditate for an hour, everything gets better and they find the time. So when I teach, like, so I do some work with like corporations and stuff. And like, part of what I tell them is that, 
you can't tell people to take care of themselves off of the clock. So what I actually encourage like companies and hospitals to do is like bake meditating time into their day and pay them for it. You'll see a return on your investment. It's crazy. But what I tell people is when they call me in for like a meditation training, I say, don't have me come at 5 p.m. Have me come in the middle of the workday and they don't have to stay longer. It's dedicated time to take care of yourself because that's actually part of your job. It's part of your job. And so the first thing that has to change is that you've got to start stop thinking in terms of either or and and. And then the question becomes, okay, how the fuck do we do that? So that's yeah. one thing, right? So that's like, <laughs> yeah, so we'll get to that. So, but I, I just want you to notice that your mind is programmed to think in terms of either ors. It's like, I have to do this or that. And I just don't accept that logical premise. So you're going to wake up and like, you know, you're going to say like, okay, I could do this, but I don't feel like doing this. I don't, I really don't want to do this. And then your mind is going to automatically go to like, either I do this or I do this, but like, just tr try to take a step back and try to find an and somewhere in there. Can you start stream a little bit later every day? Can you stream for like less than 15 hours? You know, can you like, yeah. like put some kinds of limits around it? Take care of yourself and stream. Second thing is... I think you've got to unburden yourself. And I know there's a lot of these questions are going to be like, how? And so we'll get to that. But I, I mean, I, I get the sense, Kate, that you carry around a lot of weight, which really does not need to be on your shoulders. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is like, you have this pressure to create this ranch. Like, I don't know how to explain this to you, but like, you can't really do that. Right. So like for the same reason that like there's the random bloat stuff, and I don't mean to bring up something negative, but my point is that there's a certain amount of RNG in real life. And for mm -hmm. you to slave and sacrifice yourself for like this thing is, I just don't think that that's fair or even reasonable. Can the ranch happen? Absolutely. Should you devote yourself to it? Absolutely. And at the same time, there's a certain amount of fucking RNG. Right. So like, I, it sounds crazy to me that like you're, you're doing all of this stuff, but like take a step back and recognize that, you know, the ranch is going to happen if it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that like, uh, what you, know, you kind of mentioned this nightmare about a zombie dog. What I'm actually envisioning is 10 years from now, you succeed at the ranch. And instead of like Disney princess Kate running it, and it's going to be like, have you seen Snow White? Like the old one? Yeah. So like, you know how Snow White runs around and there are a lot of animals like surrounding her that are singing and dancing and stuff like that. Yeah. That's what I envision the ranch is what the ranch should be. And what mm -hmm. I'm actually seeing is like zombie Kate running the ranch because that's yeah. what you're going to turn into the way that you're going. And it's going to be like, everything is like scary. And like, you're like a zombie because you've burnt out and, and you're like, I don't even know what burning out is. That means you burnt out. You're already burnt out. <laughs> this is burn this is burnout. Yeah. That's what I was like wondering because everyone's like always warns about a burnout. I'm like, I never felt that coming. Does that mean that it's I'm past that point? <laughs> yeah. So let me give you a quick heads up. If you don't know who you are as a person, you cry at random times and you feel like your soul is being sucked away by social media, you might be burnt out. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Those may be signs of burnout. I don't know what that's a sign of, but burnout sure as hell like kind of fits there, right? Yeah. So I really do think it's worthwhile to kind of stay, take a step back and think about, you know, in order for you to really make the ranch what you want it to be, what it needs is not like burden. Like it's not like a sense of like severe duty that's going to create the place that I envision when I hear you talk about it. It's actually mm -hmm. like love and caring. And what I'm hearing from you is that like that person is slipping away from you, which is why it's yeah. so fucking terrifying. You're just not that person anymore. It doesn't feel like you are. That person is still in there. We got to let her out. We'll get to the house. But I, I genuinely do think that taking care of yourself is going to help you be the person that has that compassion to give. If mm -hmm. you look at studies of burnout, the first thing to go when someone gets burnt out is empathy and compassion. Mm. That's what your mind and body and physiology and neuroscience sacrifice. So if you look at physicians who are burnt out, the number one sign of burnout is a lack of empathy. P 
people stop caring about their patients. So they go there and they like do the work of saving their lives, but they stop caring. When you, you know, when you're working with a patient who's been diagnosed with cancer and the family like wants to talk to you about things that are not medical, the compassionate physician sits down and has that conversation. The burnt out physician, which doesn't mean that they're an asshole, is like looking at their clock and thinking about, okay, where, when can I get out of this room and like finish up my orders and check in with the nurses and do all my documentation so that I can go home at a reasonable hour, like 830 at night. And I've been here since seven in the morning. And it's not the physician's fault. It's just compassion goes first. So I genuinely think that like you've got to start taking care of yourself so that you can be the compassionate person. Like that's why I think you're losing yourself because you can't, you can't be that person. Right. I think in my case, because I don't have other people around me, it's like that has been towards myself, compassion and empathy. What do you mean towards yourself? Like like losing it, losing it towards myself, like my self-care and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I don't work with other people. It's a very isolated job. And and that we kind of see too, because I, I think like, you know, because I, I, I get the sense that, I mean, clearly you've told us that you actually like don't take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. And and that, for example, you have some potential medical problems that may need to be reevaluated and stuff, but you can't find the time in the day. Right. Um, so the last thing is that, like, I encourage you to I know this may sound bizarre and, and maybe we can have a brief conversation about like religion or spirituality. But like, I encourage you to think about taking what life has given you. So like you're lucky and you're grateful, which is awesome. But also like. You know, just because you're lucky and great, grateful and you have this opportunity doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice yourself. I mean, something about this just feels to me like you're not counting on the forces, whether they be Twitch chat, your general charisma, your RNG, or your cosmic duty, or like they're supporting you. And that mm. you don't have to do it all yourself. Like I came onto this platform and I tried to do it all by myself and like, it doesn't work. I can't do it. I can't save the internet. And it's yeah. ridiculous, but that's how we feel, right? Like you feel like you have to do it all yourself, but like, don't, I mean, I, I don't know how else to say it. I mean, as someone who has recognized that I am very, very well supported by like thousands of people, like there are people who are in your corner too. You don't have to grind out every sub to make this ranch happen. Like if the ranch really is going to happen, it can't be done just by you because you're talking about making it big, right? Yeah. And so are you thinking about personally bankrolling it? Um, Part of it's going to be like fundraising, I feel like through social media. But I guess for me personally, I want to make sure that I'm... Like I have enough money saved up for like emergencies or just general life things for myself so that that way every um, discretional income that I make can be spent towards the charity organization aspect of it. So yeah. that it's not like my income anymore, but instead it's like through the charity. Yeah. So I, I think that like, so just like stop and think about that. So that when you, when you wake up on a particular day and you're like, Hey, I need to start streaming right away or I need to keep streaming. Like, I don't know how those thoughts, if those thoughts like factor in to your decision in the moment, do they? I guess at this point, it's not really thinking about it. It's more of just like ingrained in me. It's like, I get up and I do this and like I like I wouldn't know what else to do with my day at this point where it's like as far as working productively towards the goal goes. Yeah. So then I think we get to the next thing. So I, I like your idea of a charity and stuff like this, because as someone who also had a mission to create an organization and f- personally bankroll it, it's not sustainable. You're just going to tear yourself apart. I was working a full time job as a doctor and trying to start Healthy Gamer and it just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um. So the last thing I think is, is kind of like more practical, which is like, okay, so like, what do we do about this stuff? Right. And I think some of this stuff is actually like super, super like nuts and bolts. It sounds to me like you literally don't know how to take care of yourself. Yeah, a little bit. And I I don't mean that to be like, does that sound condescending? No. Okay. I just have, like, if I've never been taught in my exactly. home life, I also never, like, tried to do it as an adult, then naturally you just, like, don't know what to do. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, here, so so then we can talk about practically, like, how do you take care of yourself? And, and some of this stuff also involves, like, behavioral reinforcement, because 
on the one hand, I'm feeling like this sense of like, you know, duty or dharma to create mm -hmm. this thing for animals and like make the world a better place. And on the other hand, like even when you don't like that, at least the grind feels rewarding because you know you're moving towards this like ultimate goal. Yeah. And then the flip side is like, if you don't stream for a day, then you're just kind of twiddling your thumbs and like doing laundry and like kind of hanging out around the house. And you're like, I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing with my life. Yeah. And, and so how can we help you get some kind of reinforcement through taking care of yourself that you can start to like learn and appreciate? Like that's also an important practical thing. Um, so... Thoughts about what I've said so far? Um, yeah, I mostly agree. I think another part is just like, I know that there are certain things that help me clear my mind, but it's also like justifying them, I guess, getting to a point where it's like, oh, that would be great. But then afterwards, it's like, look at all the time you wasted that you could have been streaming with. So if I, if I like took time off to like maybe go like horseback riding or something, which is like a meditative activity for me. You know, you can clear your mind, think be out in nature, it's great. But then it's like afterwards, you're like, and I just spent the whole morning not streaming, kind of like flip side guilt. Yeah. So how long have you been feeling that guilt? Mm, probably for maybe like three years or so. So is this also like it sort of started when your dog passed away? Yeah. Okay. So Kate? Okay, so there's so much to talk about. So first of all, I, I want to just kind of check in with you about how this conversation is going. I'm noticing that a lot of times I have like emotional conversations with people where there's a lot of like catharsis and like realizing what's really holding you back kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, are you hoping for something like that? Is that what you want? I guess that would be nice. Also, just like it's I feel like it's also just an important conversation to have about like it's okay to feel this kind of way for streamers you know where it's like the grind makes you like feel like you're going crazy I think that's like normal to know that you're not crazy yeah and that I, happens to a lot of people it's, that is important um so can you tell me about you know what what about streaming makes you feel like you're going crazy um I guess like I, I personally do have ADD so it's like just like the chat in general doesn't work well with my ability to retain information or to process it at all you know okay like I was to your conversation with Ms. Giff, and he he also has the same issues that I felt like there's like problems like focusing on like conversations typically if I like if I'm looking at chat like right now I have chat closed because I get I get so distracted um I have difficulty like taking in just like my environment, things happening around me, I'll often be like in my own head and I'll like sometimes just like bump into stuff at stores. I just don't realize like anything's there. And then like I'm super messy. I also do the thing of like leaving fridge doors open, jars off lids. When I was living with my roommate, they would often think that I got abducted because they would come home and like <laughs> there would still be groceries outside of the car because I would be like making trips, unloading the car and I would just like get distracted and do something else. And then the cabinet would be open. The jar of peanut butter would, would be left like with the lid off. <laughs> and like the milk cap wasn't screwed on, but it was still put back in the fridge. <laughs> so it was like stuff like that where they're like, what happened here? Is she okay? <laughs> yeah, it does seem like you got abducted. Everything's like half done, right? So it's sort of like someone just yeah. walked in and just snatched you out. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and and so I'm, that sounds like ADD really does. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that doesn't make you crazy, but you said something about social media and and streaming and how you, you kind of feel crazy I sometimes. I juggle too many things, right? Or like I try to, which would be like, I guess, okay if I was healthy, but because I don't get enough sleep because of the pressures of social media, having to constantly make stuff, get stuff done on all the platforms. I feel like my mind can't handle it off on a functional level. Like, because I, I have three YouTube channels I have two, in, no, three Instagrams. I have two Twitters and I stream full time as well. And and I also have to have photo shoots during the week for Instagram. And like, it's, Why? it's, it's a lot. Why do you have three Instagrams? Because <laughs> I have my personal one in case something ever happens to my main one. 
Um, and then I also have my dog's Instagram because I'm trying to grow that towards like the animal stuff later in life and network with trainers and things on that. Uh, so yeah, I have, I'm very diverse and I feel like my ADD mentality thinks like I can handle this because I'm used to multitasking, Yeah. but because I'm not taking care of myself, I just feel like I'm actually going insane more than I normally would be with all the multitasking. What is going insane? What do you mean by that? Like brain fog a lot. Like I'll just like stop. The, like I'll, I can't remember what I was doing and stuff. You know, it's like different from like processing information, like mid task. I'll just be like totally blanking on like what I was just doing. Okay. So you're, you're noticing like a cognitive impact is yeah. when you say the word insane. The way to describe it is like having a browser and you keep opening new tabs to the point where it just no longer responds. Okay. So I'm not hearing anything kind of emotional in terms of insanity. What I'm hearing is like no. more cog like cognition. So it's like right. like you're kind of, you know, your program crashes. Like making PV and J dot exe has crashed and it's just yeah. And just stop. And then there's like right. peanut yeah. butter and jelly jars in two different places. Yeah, then... it's a lot of like different effects, I guess. Cause the emotional side feels like because I don't like cater to like my own self, I don't I don't have like as much personality or know myself anymore, you know. But then there's also the cognitive side where I feel like I'm doing so much that like my mind is actually stopping its performance. Okay. Who did you used to be? Uh I guess just more like spontaneous and energetic and fun. Like I still have like a lot of energy, but not like in my um emotional side is weird it's like I have physical energy but I'm not like as bubbly or happy on a daily basis if that makes sense it's weird it's like hard to explain because I guess English doesn't have that many good words for it but it's like emotional energy is a lot less what keeps you what what kind of keeps you from being happy on a day-to-day -day basis probably just overloaded my system like, like, I don't have enough free time to do the things that I know would be helpful for myself, like to de-stress. What? Like the, like the, like taking long walks, I guess, with the dogs or like horseback riding and things. I'm just like, there's not enough hours in the day to accomplish all the different aspects of my social media empire and also still take time for myself. So it's yeah. like, I know what kind of like what would help. But then I, it would also be detrimental, I feel, to the career side. So it's like a lot of conflicting yeah. feelings. I also do not have a good sleep schedule, which is like, I know that it's bad, but I also feel like every time I try to like finish my tasks faster and go to sleep, I, there's just always more to do. <laughs> so How like, many hours? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you know, the problem with sleep schedules is that they're wonderful in theory, but like practically, like who the fuck has time for a sleep schedule? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like let me, my average is like four to five hours. How many hours a day do you work? Um, I guess technically every time I'm not sleeping, I'm working in some way because it's either like getting ready for stream, you know, like makeup and hair and all that. Or like I'm uh, doing photo shoots for my other platforms or I'm like answering messages and emails. So I guess I work constantly if I'm not sleeping, which I guess in my case should be considered napping because it's really not that restful. <laughs> hey, this is fucking awful, dude. Yeah. What? How do you feel when I say that? True. Like a big true. What's what's true about it? It's not healthy. I mean, that's true. <laughs> what else? What's awful about it? I don't know what else. Really. It's hard to put into words. I guess like just the feeling of being trapped again. Trying to figure out how to dig further. Right? 
and and you do yeah some... that's something i haven't really been able to do lately what are you trapped by i guess the what i know it might be like just my psychological feeling of what the job requires but just like having to be constantly uploading content everywhere just to keep everything alive and working together towards like constant growth rather than loss i guess of numbers and relevancy and monetary and all that stuff and it's not so much like an ego thing like i don't really care about if it was just like you know myself like i feel like i have enough confidence as a person it's just like the the dream that i have it's like so intense that i feel like no i don't want it to slip away because it's like a very rare opportunity that most people don't get i feel to actually like be in the position where you can actually accomplish what you want So you feel lucky and it's almost, I'm almost getting the sense that you feel beholden to the dream and the big dream because you can actually achieve it. Yeah. It almost feels Yeah, it's like most people just have dreams and they never get to even have a chance of achieving them. And so you would be an ungrateful little shit if you had the chance to achieve your dream and you let it slip by because you wanted to sleep for five and a half hours instead of five. Right. So, Kate, I'm going to say something to you. It may sound kind of weird. I think what you've done is you've managed to build an empire. Mm -hmm. And empires, I know this is going to sound like kind of a silly question. It's not a trick question. So, you know, what requires more of your life force? One YouTube channel or three? I'm actually not sure because I feel like for me once I'm in the mode of of working you know like it doesn't feel much different maybe I'm just so used to it to where like working a little bit I might as well work a lot because if it feels like the same amount of energy for each task you know yeah so that that Mm -hmm. sort of boggles my mind because the short answer is three YouTube channels take more energy than one YouTube channel and sometimes we, we you know, I, I kind of talk about thoughts. And I think what you've managed to do, Kate, is you've built this empire. And the bigger it grows, the more of you it takes. Mm-hmm. Right? And, yeah. like, as you get closer and closer to success, you get more and more, like, lost. Because, like, now there's three Instagrams and three YouTubes. And then, like, not only do the, each of them require their own thing and two Twitters plus streaming, plus photo shoots. And you could give, it was fine to sacrifice yourself when there wasn't like that much, the empire wasn't as big and hungry as it is now. But you fed it and it's grown. And then it wants more. And the only place that you know, like where to feed it is from yourself. And what I'm almost getting the sense of is that, like, you're getting consumed by it. Yeah. I mean, the first, in the first five minutes, you were talking about, like, losing yourself in social media. And now what I'm kind of getting a picture of is, like, you've, like, created this monster. And then the more you feed it, the bigger it grows. And the bigger it grows, the hungrier it gets and the more food it needs. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you're just get everything growing. Yeah. What do you think about that? It just is what it is. If you want to go that route, right? It's like, I don't really know how to keep it growing without like cut it without cutting back a significant amount and still like catering to my happiness. Right. It's like, it's almost like I have to choose and the problem is I don't want to choose. I'm very indecisive. Like I want both. And as a result so, of that, I feel like I get neither. Yep. So there it is, right? I feel like I have to choose. No, you don't have to. There's there's your thinking that's the you or them. You feel like you have to choose. I don't think you actually need to choose. I know it sounds crazy. But I, I think you can take care of yourself and that the empire can, I mean, there may be practical things in terms of, I, I don't know if you like work with, other people or like you have employees or you like farm. I yeah. pay help with some stuff. 
Yeah. So, I mean, there's always that kind of stuff. But And ultimately, if you want to grow, I think that's the route you have to go because you can't do it all yourself. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that this is this is the crux of the problem. And I think in your case, I have something that I really want to tell you, but I think it's going to terrify you. Lay it on me. I've already terrified myself a lot. I think you've got to let go of your dream. Mm. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't pursue it. Right. But like you can't, there's no such thing as like long-term happiness. That very mm. idea is false. This is like pot of the gold at the end of the rainbow. And I see this time and time and time again. Like, so like my favorite examples are from investment banking. So these are people mm. who work really hard in college to get their dream job. And then they get their dream job at a place like Goldman Sachs. And then they're like an analyst there, which means that they're at the bottom of the totem pole. And if they just keep grinding and keep grinding, things are going to get better. And then they find themselves as associates and they have more money and now they can fly first class for the 10 days that they get to themselves every year. Right. And then the other 355 they're working and then they become vice presidents, then they become directors and then they become managing directors. And then they make $16 million a year and they've made it. And they sacrifice so much. They're 58 years old. They've been divorced three times. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of the rainbow. And then they look back at their life and they're like, this is it. This is what I did it for. And they're filled with regret and loneliness. And it's not what it was supposed to be. It's not what they thought it was. It was a fantasy that ultimately like each step of the way in theory, things got better and they moved closer and closer to their goal. And like, are you moving closer and closer to your goal? Uh, I am. And how does that feel? It's like a light at the end of the tunnel, right? It's like, oh, I'm almost there. And then I can like feel the peace and enjoy. But then part of me is like, what if I get there and I'm so fucked up that I can't even find that happiness I'm looking for? Yeah. And I think the scary thing, Kate, is I'm hearing that the closer you get to your goal, the worse that you feel. (laughs) And the worse that you feel, the more you hold on to the fantasy because that'll make it okay. And in my... Catch 22. Yep. And so I think, Kate, you got to start living for today. And if, if the light at the end, like I have faith in you, I think that your passion and compassion and drive and dedication are not going to disappear if you take a week off. Like you're not going to magically transform into a fucking lazy asshole. You know, like if you take a week off. I want you to have faith in yourself that you'll get there one day and you're not going to do it on your own and killing yourself in the process is certainly not going to help. And as your empire has grown and you've gotten closer and closer to like success, you like fall more and more into the dark side. Right. And then you like, you reach all of your ambitions and then you look back at your life and it's like empty and filled with like ruin. And that's not good. (laughs) Yeah. And I know it's really, really scary, but I think you've got to start letting go. Like, I'm not saying don't try, but what I'm saying is like, don't attach yourself to that outcome. It's kind of like you're looking at the top of the mountain and you're kind of saying, it's going to be amazing when I get to the top. It's going to be amazing when I get to the top. But what what you should really be focused on is like, how am I going to take the next step? You can't ever avoid taking the next step. And is that Mm -hmm. the right step or the wrong step? And what I'm hearing right now is that like you've pulled a muscle and you're forcing yourself to continue to climb. And like, that's not the way to get to the top of the mountain. As someone who's tried to climb a mountain, pulled a muscle and kept going. Crazy story that maybe I'll share one day, but does that make sense? Like, I just don't, like, I think you've got to take care of yourself in the here and now and like, don't. I mean, I know it sounds weird to say, don't worry, but just have faith in yourself that you'll get to where you want to go. Yeah, it makes sense. It's just like, I guess it's hard to, 
let go of the grind because of the way that I mean, if I was on YouTube, I feel like it'd be easier because you can schedule a bunch of videos and then take a week off and it's fine. It's like you weren't didn't even disappear. It's just I think Twitch is unique in the fact that like you, when you're not live, people are constantly being distracted with other people who are live. And it's like if they're gone for a week, that's how habits form. And they just watch other people. And so it feels like you're losing everything that you've built. And like it's just difficult to like justify time off because it's how it is, especially with like the way the subsystem works, like people are falling off every day. I feel like it would be a little easier, but Twitch would probably never fix this. If they had like a certain day, like the first of the month where subs were charged, and then you can like schedule your time off. But that's just not how it is. So it's really hard to like justify that. Yeah. So I, I don't know that you should take a week off. But what I'm thinking about is like, it starts small, right? So you've built up this empire by feeding the beast one bite at a time and then two bites and then three bites and four bites. And I think your road to balance is the same way. Hmm. So I think it's not so much about don't, because like you say that the pile of tasks you have to do is endless, right? There's always something else to do. So at the end of the day, you know, you have a hundred tasks and you can do 40 of them on a given day. Like, what's the difference between 38 and 40? So what I would encourage you to do is set aside some amount of your day to take care of yourself every day. Don't think mm -hmm. about it as doing less work because you actually may not even do less work. It's just carve out the time for like one hour a day to like do something for yourself. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's definitely more, I guess, um, reasonable of an approach to me, but the hard part is the discipline and actually following through with that. Yeah. You know, so, like yeah. So, media. so, so dis discipline is like, I think discipline is not the right word. Discipline is not what you need. What you need is practice. Mm. Right. So this is, everyone's like, oh, I'm lazy. It's going to be hard. I guarantee you it's going to be hard. It's not, you're not, it's not discipline. Discipline is not actually the answer at all. You don't need to be disciplined. You're never going to be disciplined. You're always going to be a creature that is like pulled by your impulses. That's what people with ADD are. And I think that's actually okay. Like ADD is a problem because you leave peanut butter jars open, but it also allows you to thrive in a social media environment because you can manage eight social media accounts plus a, a Twitch stream. Yeah. People without ADD can't do that shit. Like your mm -hmm. mind is actually designed to thrive in this sort of environment. And you yeah. need to practice doing something else. And so I don't know if it's like horseback riding. Like, do you do scheduling or no? Do you do schedules? No, not okay. really. Or just like when I feel like I can't handle it anymore, I'll just like do something and then, but then I'll, during it, it's like, I'll feel great. And then afterwards it's like, oh no. <laughs> Which is yeah. so much type so, of thing. It's like, it's, it clears my mind in the moment. And then after you feel like the guilt. Yeah, so let's talk about that for a second. Okay, so just because you have, okay, this is going to sound like a stupid question. So sorry if it confuses you because it's so stupid. But are thoughts facts? No. Okay, so like you're going to go horseback riding and then you're going to feel guilty, right? Mm -hmm. And then that guilt is going to generate thoughts. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're going to say like, oh, I wasted so much time. But those are just, they're just fucking thoughts. They're like patterns. They're like conditioning. Right. It doesn't actually mean that's true. Like, sure, you spent an hour horseback riding and you could have done some things during that hour. But even if you had done things during that hour, you still would not ever be doing enough. Right. It's kind of like, let's say that I'm trying to empty the ocean with a teaspoon. And then I spend an hour horseback riding instead of emptying the ocean. And then I come back and it's like, oh my God, I could have emptied 30 teaspoons out of the ocean. And it's like, yeah, that's technically true, but who the fuck actually cares? It's not going to make a difference. Yeah, it's true. And what I want you to do, so this is like very important for like people who are watching too, is that do something to take care of yourself, but don't do it to take care of yourself. Do it as an experiment. Hmm. So go horseback riding. Today's Friday. Do you stream over the weekend? Yeah. Every can, day. can you go horseback riding over the weekend? Like, yeah. I imagine it's safer in terms of COVID stuff, right? 
because mm-hmm. Texas is crazy right now. So yeah. your your homework is to go horseback riding. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, you're going to go horseback riding. And then what you're going to do is pay attention, watch, and see when the feelings of guilt arise. And like, just let them arise and they're going to have those thoughts. And like, you kind of like, you know, it's sort of like when you're training a dog, like the dog sometimes barks. And if you Mm kind of like give into it, it's going to like agitate more. But if you kind of just behave with tranquility, then you kind of like, it'll calm down. And see what happens with how long the guilty thoughts last if you don't feed into them. You don't disagree with them. Kind of say, yeah, you're right. I could have, I could have done more, but I chose not to. Mm -hmm. I'm going to feel guilty. So be it. What do you think about that? I think that it's, it's probably likely I'll soon forget with my way of thinking of like, if I don't focus on it, I'll move on to something else in my mind. Okay, so this is also, so good. I was getting the sense that something about that wasn't sitting well with you. Um, and, and so then the question becomes, so then like how, but so, so what are you going to do about that, Kate? Like this is just because you forget about things, like you can't, in my mind, you have to figure out some way to, and I can help you. But, um, you know, just because your mind is likely to forget doesn't mean that you can't, you can't give up practicing because you're likely to forget. Mm -hmm. it's sort of like you have to do with this in spite of that does that make sense or am i losing you yeah yeah it makes sense so i mean that's also where i'd say like you're streaming right now right Mm -hmm. and how long are you streaming today i don't really know typically it goes until i'm like okay i have things to do and i don't have like a set schedule for my end time typically just for my start times okay can you go tomorrow horseback riding no not tomorrow (laughs) why not um because i already had stuff planned for tomorrow's stream i wanted to do like cooking and like a dog walk and stuff that's i plan out my streams weekly so that's why it's like also hard i have to like kind of like schedule i guess the time off hold on hold on i'm confused i thought you didn't do well with schedules not for my own time. My it, free time. Okay. So now we get to a really important point. This has to be part of your job. It's not free time. Yeah. You remember when I was telling you, like, when I go to a corporation, I'm like, yeah, you guys are going to have me teach meditation. Can't be at 5 p.m. when everyone's ready to go home. It has to be during mm-hmm. work hours. You need to reduce the amount that you work. Not squeeze mm-hmm. this in as extra. Kate, this must change. This is part of your job. Because zombie Kate is not going to get as many subs as fun Kate. Living Kate. Let's call her living Kate and zombie Kate. Yeah. Right? So this has to be part of your job. And where's the rebellion? Go ahead, rebel. I don't have any right now. Really? Really. So when do you make your schedule for the week? Uh, Sunday night. Okay. So do you ha- can you do it? Can you go horseback riding on Sunday? No, I have a podcast. Okay. I have, to, I have to schedule it for sometime next week. Okay. So schedule it as part of your day. And if you need to, to feed the social media beast, take a lot of selfies. How does that feel? It's it's not so much like a, a selfie type thing. It's okay. more of just like the, the stream aspect okay. of it. Okay. Yeah. Even better than no selfies. That sounds far healthier to me. But you got to yeah. schedule time for yourself, my dude. Mm-hmm. Like it's the only way this is going to work because you're just getting lost. Kate is getting consumed by Amaran. Yeah. And you've got to, like, help her out. Like, she needs your help. She's, like, it's almost, if you want to get super, like, Freudian and psychoanalytical, you were, you were, sacri- you were leaving Kate alone at home while Amaranth goes to work for mm-hmm. 16, 18, 20 hours a day. And you're doing exactly to yourself what your parents did to you. Mm-hmm. Which is not abusive. It's just you always come last because there are more important necessities. 
Yeah, makes sense. Emotions? Uh, I don't know. It's hard for me to, like, feel emotions lately, like, as far as, like, expressing them. Like, I feel them, but I don't know how to describe them. Yeah. What do you feel? You Don't worry about describing. Tell me what you physically feel. Hmm. I feel like tension, I guess, still in my yep. body. Okay. But I also don't sleep. So I'm not, see, and that's part of me is wondering, like, how much of it is because I don't physically take care of myself versus, like, the actual job itself. Both. It's not either or. There's your either or thinking again. Is it because I don't take care of my physical self or because of the job? Both. Right? Mm -hmm. And I, I can tell that you've got some emotion. I think maybe what I said was maybe a little bit more hurtful or gained traction than I intended. No, no, it wasn't hurtful. It's just my, that's just how my body copes with, I guess, physical stress too is like emotional crying and stuff. No, that doesn't make sense to me. So, because what triggered your response is something that was emotional in origin. Your body copes, so it's a cycle, like, I said something, and then that triggered an emotional response. Does that make sense? Yeah, maybe just, like, part of it could be also, like, knowing I, I have to change and also being, like, scared to actually do it. Yep. That I can get behind. What are you scared of? I don't really know. I guess failing. Yeah. See, you're doing a good job. So now we know there's fear, right? That's what you're feeling. There's tension, but there's also fear. Yeah. I guess like there's so many like different aspects of like the way both physical and emotional and like ambition and stuff that it just kind of like is very confusing to process. Yeah, I completely agree. So I think you have a lot of emotions that you've stuck in your basement or attic because we're in Texas and we don't have basements. Yeah. And I think the problem is like, just like cleaning out your attic or garage, when you go in there and you've stuffed a lot of stuff in there, it can feel really, really overwhelming. And there's fear and there's mm -hmm. ambition, there's hope, there's responsibility, there's duty. And it can I feel... The coping mechanism is to just, like, suppress all of it and just keep, like, burying yourself into work. Yep. Very insightful. Right? And that's mm -hmm. not going to work, hon. I didn't mean to sound condescending, but sorry. No, it's fine. I say that to males that I work with, too. I say dude <laughs> and hun kind of interchangeably. I try to be gender equal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I will call women dudes and I will call men hun. Yeah. <laughs> and therefore I offend everyone equally. <laughs> um, do you mind if I ask how old are you? 26. Yeah. And are there people that can, like, do you have support in your life? Um, I guess like my parents just are generally supportive, you know, but like, I guess I don't really talk to many people. So it's like, yeah, I know, like in theory supportive, but like not like on a daily basis. Do you share your struggles with anyone? Not really. What does that feel like? My dogs can't talk back, so. Huh? <laughs> My dogs can't talk back, so. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess it, it, you kind of not tend not to think about it when you don't practice doing it, right? If you just suppress everything and just keep working and you don't have time to think about it you don't realize how much it's like fucked up up there yeah i want you to take a deep breath good slow exhalation It's hard for me to like physically deep breathe deeply, which I think contributes a lot to anxiety. What makes it hard for you to physically deep breathe deeply? I feel like my nose doesn't inhale air very much. And when I do it through my mouth, it feels like I can't get it quite to my diaphragm. Like it's very drying. Okay. Okay. So what I want you to do is slow down your exhalation. So...
really slow, slower. Okay. Slower. Tiny, 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 tiny. Huh? It feels like I'm running out of air to exhale. Good. It feels like you're running out of air, air to exhale, or do you feel hungry for air at the end of your exhalation? Both. Like, I feel like it needs to be longer and then I need more immediately. So it sounds like taking deep breaths is actually somewhat uncomfortable for you. Yeah. Interesting. I think it's because, like, with my nose, it's like, it wasn't as bad when I was a kid. So my whole life, I've been used to nose breathing. I've never developed, like, the mouth breathing. Except, like, I guess maybe when I'm asleep and don't realize it. But, like, as I get older, I feel like it's becoming more of an issue. So it's like, I'm having to shift it and it's uncomfortable too because I've built it up the other way. Can you do me a favor? Can you pinch the tip of your nose like this and then breathe? It's like a little better. I've noticed that too. When I like shift my nostrils a certain way, I can get more air through it. Just pinch and take a deep breath. I just realized how ridiculous we look. I know. <laughs> can you I notice have... a difference though? Yeah, it's a little easier. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, so Kate, you know, I think of all of the conversations I've ever had on stream, this feels to me to be the most incomplete. What do you think about that? What do you mean by incomplete? I feel like we have a lot more left to talk about. Hmm. What do you think? Yeah, probably. I would say so. It's just like... I guess because I'm a unique case, most people don't like do this type of like constantly for years. Yeah. What comes up when you say that? Exhaustion a little bit and like sadness for myself. You sound really tired to me. <laughs> I joke with Chad, I'm always tired. They're like, how do you keep having energy? When Aren't you tired by now? I'm like, no, I'm always tired. <laughs> you know, it's like the whole thing. He's always mad. What's it like to be tired all the time? Just overwhelming to my system. Like, I don't even know why I'm crying. It's not that I'm sad. It's just like my system is physically overwhelmed. Yeah. I think you've gotten so good at suppressing that your body is like, hey, we have a bunch of emotions. And then your mind is like, uh-uh. And then your body's like, okay, we got to put them somewhere. And they come out through your body. Yeah, probably. I've been like this too since I was a kid. Like, you know, it's just like if my mom was like yelling at me to clean my room or something, like just any kind of confrontation. And it might be because my breathing problem just induces more anxiety. I'm not quite sure. Like just like mundane parental conversations, I would just start crying. And it's not like a sad thing. She's not like insulting me. It's just like any type of like confrontation where I'm like having to do something I didn't like naturally want to do because I'm like a messy kid. It's just like constant crying yeah uh, kate have you thought about working with a therapist or do you work with a therapist no i thought about it i haven't done it yet what's gotten oh i can probably answer this but what's what's kept you from doing <laughs> if i've been paying attention i should know the answer already but let's do give you the benefit of asking you what's gotten in the way I'm just working so much i guess the time yeah so I think you got to really seriously consider it. And I think a couple hours throughout the week, like three or four hours throughout the week, I'd say ideally every day, you got to schedule as part of your job, something to take care of yourself. Yeah. Because you owe that to Kate. Yeah. Right? So it, I just, it's really weird because I think people, whenever you cry, perceive like you're really sad. And I'm like, I'm not even sad. I'm just like physically overwhelmed. I feel like I'm yeah. not like emotional about a certain thing at the moment you know like all things considered I have a pretty like good outlook on life you know I'm like yeah I'm really lucky to be here I have all my stuff in order and stuff I, I know I don't take care of myself but I'm not like emotionally torn up about anything at the moment it's just like my body expresses being overwhelmed with crying 
Yep. So, uh, and it's my belief, Kate, that you do have part of that, um, um, that over physical feeling of overwhelmed is probably like emotion that, as you kind of have hinted at, is suppressed. Mm -hmm. Right. Because when, like, how does it feel to be tired? You said tired and sad. There's some guilt. There's some fear. I imagine there's a lot of a thing. It's more of like, I guess it's like a different type of sadness. It's not like, you know, like, oh no, everything is terrible. It's more of like, oh, it sucks that like I'm losing myself kind of like sorrow for like my personality, I guess. Yeah. It, that is very sad. Right. Just listen to the person. It's just like a sad thing. It's, it's hard to put into words. Yeah. So it's almost as if you're like not connected to that person. It's almost like, it almost sounds like dissociative to me. A little bit. You know, like you're like, oh, it's like, it's sad that that's happening to Kate. Ah, oh, well, back to editing YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And and that's, that's, that's the crux of what we're talking about today is like, you've, you've lost touch with yourself. Mm-hmm. And I think part of what keeps you from re-engaging is because like, if you re-engage, you mentioned fear. I think part of what you could be afraid of is like, the torrent of stuff that's going to come if you engage. If you reconnect with Kate, Amaranth is afraid of getting bowled over. Yeah. And if you fall apart as Amaranth, then everything you've worked for gets blown away. Mm -hmm. And so why would you risk connecting with Kate? Yeah. I'm sorry I don't have more for you. No, oh, no, it's fine. I I not really I don't have expectations. I just feel like it's good. I'm sure there's like a lot of people who make content who like feel similarly like the grind is like taking away part of what made them them before the social media grind began and they just don't know how to talk about it or who to talk to or if they even can cuz they sound like ungrateful little bitches. And... Yep, I was going to you know, I've been waiting for an opportunity to ask if you sound, if you feel that way. Do you feel like an ungrateful little bitch? I mean, I don't, I don't feel like I am. I'm just afraid of like, if you talk about this a lot, are you perceived that way? Right. It's like, if you're like, man, it's so like, it's so, uh, I guess, exhausting to be able to do what you want for a living day in and day out with no one to tell you otherwise and get to make a lot of money doing that yeah it must be must be really terrible you little bitch type of thing yeah. it's like how i enjoy people's reaction to it like oh yeah try shoveling shit in the street for 12 hours see if you prefer that you ungrateful bitch that's how i feel like people would be yeah the coming. internet the internet loves it when content creators don't get to be human yeah they hate treating you like humans go like there's a lot of gatekeeping around suffering too you know you say like oh you're not allowed to suffer because you have it better than other people which is just not true unfortunately if only it were true any kind of uh, apologies if, if this has been a little bit of meandering on my end, but like any kind of takeaways or anything that you felt was helpful from today's conversation? Um, just reconfirming that my feelings aren't ungrateful and crazy and that it would be understandable to feel that way. Yeah, I think like very I- much so. I, I think not only is that under, understandable, I think you deserve to feel that way. And I think you should feel that way. And I think it's okay to feel that way. And yeah, I, like that's comfortable. And I, I don't think that anything that you do invalidates any of the things that you feel. I don't think that your gratitude, your luck, your empire, or anything abs- like takes away the right for you to feel the way that you do. Mm-hmm. And I do think you're going to need courage and practice, not discipline. Don't need fucking discipline. Discipline isn't for people like us. You don't need it. I and have you... not a good amount of that. <laughs> yep. Right. And I'm sure people watching would be very confused because what they see is someone who works like 16 to 18 hours a day, right. 20 hours not... a day. They're like, how oh, is this person not disciplined? It's not disciplined. Like, I don't know how to take time off. <laughs> it's yeah. not disciplined. It's like robot hyper-focus. Yep. 
And so some people robot hyper-focus on video games, you robot hyper-focus on streaming. And people are envious of people who happen to hyper-focus on things that lead to monetary success, which is fair. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I feel like you're just as out of control as someone who's like addicted to video games and playing at home because you're not in control. You're consumed. Right. You're on autopilot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, it, you know, Kate, like I said, I'm, I'm sorry that I feel like there's still a lot to cover in terms of like practically, I think I'm going to make a note based on our conversation today about like if you're completely stuck on autopilot and living a life, whether it be a grind or video games, like practically, how do you get started? And the first thing, so I think I'm going to think about this and try to maybe make like a, a video or something. But the first thing that I would encourage you to do is to make set aside some time in your day schedule time for yourself as part of your job. Okay. You know, and, and like, even if it's like, and even like 30 minute meal time is like not a bad idea. We haven't talked at all about food, but I don't know if you eat and take care of I yourself. Do. I don't, I only eat on stream because I never, I moved into this house maybe like a year and a half ago, almost two years now, maybe. And I never bought a table and chairs because I'm always working. So I eat at my desk when I'm working. Okay. <laughs> Any questions for me? um not really i guess if uh you want to have like an another talk if since you feel it's incomplete i'm always open I mean, I yeah what how do you, you know. feel about that i think it would be good be a fun fun endeavor for me too like i like talking about it even if i cry through some of it it's still like enjoyable for me to discuss things like that i find them insightful and good for a lot of people who don't have that avenue to talk about it so uh, I, I think that that could be really useful, Kate. I think the, the because what I felt from our conversation today is that there's a lot of like really practical stuff. There's sort of like some emotional stuff. Like I would have loved to dig in and get to a particular emotion. But oddly enough, I don't think that like discovering a particular emotion is the most important thing for you. Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing for you is for you to like literally schedule time to take care of yourself throughout the day yeah and and like i know it sounds small but like the cool thing is that you've built this monster and you can build a different one mm -hmm. the one where you take care of yourself and i do think you can find balance in your case kate it's all about a lack of balance yeah and generally speaking when people are unbalanced i don't think they're as successful mm. yeah do you want to learn how to meditate today Sure. So I'm a little bit reluctant to teach you a breathing meditation. <laughs> I mean, I can always try. Yeah, but that's okay. We don't have to teach you a breathing meditation. So I, actually what I'm going to teach you is something also a little bit more practical. So I want you to sit up straight. So you said you have a lot of tension in your neck. Yeah. What I want you to do is tuck your chin towards your throat yeah like that so you, do you feel like you're kind of the back of your head is kind of stiffening up does that make sense yeah. like tuck your chin towards like you know where your adam's yeah. apple would be and now i want you to hold that spot hold that tightness like in terms of you know you're, you're not you're kind of like, yeah like kind of like looking down almost and then mm -hmm. i want you to turn your head to the side this could be hard with headphones but keep it tucked up and tell me what you feel Not like an incredible amount of soreness, just because I do exercises a lot for this. I just, I still like feel it when I'm like, in a, supposed to be like in a resting position. I like feel my body being held tense, but it's not actually sore. Yeah, I understand. So, so, and then come back to the middle. Okay. So, and then go to the other side. So keep your chin tucked and then turn. And then you should feel something along like either here or on the back side. Do you feel that? Yeah, probably more the back side. And then come back to the middle. And then this way. And then back to the middle. Then go ahead and close your eyes. Okay. And now we're going to go to the other side. Okay. 
and just focus on that sensation. Of the tightness? Yep. And then back to the middle. And then over to your left. And notice that as you tuck your chin in a little bit more, you may feel an increased sense of tightness. Mm-hmm. So keep, bit. keep that chin nice and tucked. And now back to the middle. And then over to the other side. And now as we're doing this, your mind may start to wander especially as we go through subsequent rounds. So just notice those thoughts. Now back to the middle. And let yourself clue back in. So now just go ahead and relax for a second. Let your chin relax, eyes closed. And now feel your body. I still feel the tension a little bit. on like okay. the back on both sides. Okay, so just go ahead and let your shoulders hang down. Like imagine like your arms are actually sleeves on a piece of clothing hanging on a hanger. Mm -hmm. So don't hold them up, just let them hang. Good. Now what I want you to do is take a deep breath in and push out your diaphragm. And then out, good. You can use nose or mouth, whichever you prefer. Deep breath in and out. And then again. Now I want you to sit with the person that you are. Try to figure out who is this? Who are you right now? Is this Kate? Is this Amaranth? Is this the future starter of your animal rescue sanctuary? Is this a girl from Texas? Just be with whoever you are. Let your palms be face up. Feel the warmth in your hands. Try to stay nice and straight with your spine, but let the rest of you relax. Now we're going to take a deep breath in and we're going to raise our shoulders during the breath. Spike up your shoulders and then as you exhale, let them come down. A second time, deep breath in. And then out and relax. And then third time. And out. Now in the space afterward, go ahead and notice what thoughts may come. And I'll try to trigger some. Think about all the work that you could be doing. All the things that you could be. And invite those thoughts to come. Invite the beast of duty, responsibility, of being trapped, of having a mission, of trying to make the world a better place. All of those big thoughts with a capital B and a capital T. All of those things that are more important than Kate. All of those things can be there. 
but they ju just exist in your head. That you are actually more than those thoughts. Whatever your goals are, whatever your aspirations are, whatever you strive to be, that all of those are just located in a tiny, tiny part of you. And that there's so much more to you than those things. And now we'll do the last phase of our exercise today. And that's going to be what I want you to do is open your eyes for a second and look at me. So keep your arms by your sides, let them hang down. And then as we breathe in, what we're going to do is actually I'm going to put my arms up. And then touch them up top like a namaste. And then as you exhale, Let them come out. Good. And then again, breathe in. And then out. Now close your eyes. We're going to do three more. And try to match the arms with your inhalation. So as they come up, as you fill up air, your fingers should touch. And as you exhale, as your breath finishes, your hands are by your sides. Two more. Deep breath in. And then out. And then last one. And now we'll sit in silence for a few minutes. About 60 seconds. When you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. It's bright. Yeah. The world is a different place. So, Kate, one last thing that I'll leave you with. Reality isn't what you think it is. All that shit is just thoughts. I don't know if that makes mm -hmm. sense to you, but like, this is really what you are. And I think you should work hard every day, but nothing, I mean, this, this goal that you have is the light at the end of the tunnel and it's not worth sacrificing today for. Because mm -hmm. the scary thing is sometimes the light at the end of the tunnel is actually another train. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was that practice like for you? It was less tense. Like, yeah, good. It was a little, a little more like relieving of the tension. Good. What was your mind doing? Not really anything. Great. That's the point. That's why we meditate. To give yourself a break from your mind. Because your mind does a lot to you.
It does a lot for you. So take a break mm -hmm. from it from time to time. Yeah, it's, for me, I ha even though I have ADD, since I have breathing problems, if I have to concentrate on breathing, that's the only thing I can do. Because <laughs> it's so difficult to actually breathe. So it kind of yeah. counteracts the issue. Sounds Being uncomfortable to have breathing problems. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, any last questions for me before we wrap up for the day? Uh, no, I think that's pretty good here. Um, do you mind if we follow up with you about whether you went horseback riding next week? Sure. Would that keep you more accountable? Probably. Should we, should we do it or should we ask your viewers to do it? Um, maybe both. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> like good. They can, schedule. they can include it. Yeah. Because I, I, I schedule weekly. So a lot of what you stream is for them, right? And so let them help you out too. Yeah. And maybe your viewers can do something for themselves during the same hour that, you know, stalkers and stuff aside, I don't know how much information you can freely give out. But if you're planning on doing something to take care of yourself, I think it'd be really awesome if your community could do the same thing. And then you guys yeah. could like meet and kind of check in with each other about doing it. Yeah, that'd be nice. Cool. Thank you very much for coming on. And I hope yeah. we were able to help in some small way. Yeah, definitely. It's good to know that I'm not crazy yet. Just close, but not there yet. We're good. No, I think you're the very opposite of crazy. I think you're a normal, wonderful person who has had life, social media, and streaming get to them because that's what it does. Mm -hmm. And I think underneath i hope you'll be able to find some kind of balance between kate and amaranth instead yeah. of leaving her at home yep just gotta work on it, it has to be something that i do proactively because it's not gonna happen if i just keep being like oh at some point sure damn straight wise words kate wise words and something that i think everyone can take home taking care of yourself is not something that happens on autopilot it's something that you do mm-hmm so good luck with that. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Take care. You too.